Today I'm going to show you how to make something that no one thinks you can make, homemade marshmallows. I've given mine a little twist by using lemonade as the base and I'm going to show you how to make them. People think they're really difficult, that you can't make them at home, but you can. And you can do it without using egg whites as well, which makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to start by just softening some gelatin in a bowl with some cloudy lemonade. So cloudy lemonade has a really nice tangy flavour. You can actually use any kind of fizzy drink that you like. It all work just as well. You can even use water if you just want to make plain, plain sugary marshmallows. And I'm going to add two sachets of gelatin. Try and make sure it lands in the liquid or it won't soften properly. I'm using a powder gelatin, but you can use a leaf gelatin. It just takes a bit longer to soften. I'm going to give it a little mix with a spoon to make sure that it's all kind of incorporated into the mix and there's no dry bits lurking on the top. Then we're just going to leave that to soften whilst we get on with the sugar syrup mixture. So a marshmallow is made by pouring a sugar syrup into this gelatin and liquid mixture. So I'm going to make the sugar syrup now. All I need is some sugar into a saucepan and then I've got some golden syrup. Now I'm just going to cover the sugar with water. It should be about 150 millilitres. That's just until that sugar and syrup is submerged. And it's boiling over a low heat at the moment and I'll stir it until the sugar has dissolved. So now that all the grains of sugar has dissolved and you can't see any little grains when you lift out a little bit, so I just turn the heat up and leave it to boil until it reaches 130 degrees. So my sugar syrup mixture has been boiling for about 10 minutes now. It should be at 130 degrees on a sugar thermometer, but if you don't have one, you can test it using a jug of water. What you need to do is drop a little amount of the syrup in and it should make a thread like this, which is nice and hard when you lift it out. Just like that. So that's ready to come off the heat. And just leave it for a minute or so to cool down slightly so it doesn't bubble up everywhere when you pour it in. So I'm going to put the whisk of my stand mixer down. You need to use the whisk attachment so you get all that lovely air into the marshmallow, which is what makes them light. So now I'm going to turn this on to a low speed and pour my mixture down the side into the gelatin. It's very hot, so be careful. Turn it up a little bit higher. And then turn this up to a really high speed for the last five minutes. So my marshmallow is really sticky and white. I love this recipe because you put kind of two brown liquids together and they come out and they make this amazing white cloud. I've lined a rectangular tin with cling film. I'm going to sprinkle some icing sugar on the inside to stop it sticking to the bottom. And put a little bit up the sides. And then I've got an oiled spatula. It's really important that it's oiled or this gets really messy and really sticky. Push all the marshmallow off the whisk into the bowl so you don't leave any on there. And then take the bowl off the whisk. And then I'm going to move my marshmallow mixture into my tin. can get really stringy and sticky, but that's what makes a great marshmallow. <laughs> you just want to push it all out of your bowl. And once all the mixture is in the tin, you need to push it right into the edges using the spatula. Again, you might want to give it a nice quick oil. Just dip it in so that you can really get a nice smooth top. Otherwise, it's really difficult to do. You've got to work quite quickly because if it cools down too much, it can become too solid to work with. And then once you've got a really nice smooth layer, you need to leave this to set for two hours at room temperature. My marshmallow has been setting for about two to three hours and when I touch it, it kind of springs back and doesn't feel sticky anymore. So I'm going to take it out of the tin and I've got some more icing sugar and I'm going to sprinkle that all over the top. Just rub it in using your hands, it's not sticky anymore at all, it feels nice and dry. We're going to flip it over onto a board so we can peel off the cling film. Some edges might be a little bit stuck so you might need to kind of prise it away but you can trim the edges later so it doesn't matter if it's a bit messy. And you want to just dust the edges that have been exposed with more icing sugar. And now I've got a lightly oiled knife and I'm going to use that to cut squares out of my marshmallow. You can make all kinds of different shapes using a cutter. I quite like the traditional cubes and then slice up into nice little squares. And you want to take each square and dust it in the icing sugar mixture so all the edges are covered, but no sticky ones. And you can place the finished marshmallow squares onto a little serving board. The 
square shape is the most traditional marshmallows. It's how they used to be made before we got all the nice round ones. It's really satisfying to cut. It slices through really easily. So that is the last marshmallow done. These lemonade marshmallows are really zingy and delicious, but you could try anything as a base, like cream soda or Fanta. Get creative with whatever you like. These are the best thing to bring to a party because people just won't believe that you made them yourself. You have to give them a go.